First, let us understand what is the meaning of dropshipping. Dropshipping means that a person can have his own website or own web, own app where he gives the photographs and the description of the goods that he wants to sell, but he doesn't own it. So people on the net can come and pay for it. Once a customer pays for the goods which you have advertised, what you do is after that, you buy the product from the manufacturer and you ask him to ship it to the customer. So this is called drop, drop shopping. And it was there since long, but in pandemic, especially in 2020 and 2021, it has reached to a great extent. Online shopping was common. Now this drop shopping, where a person who makes the site, he is well versed in attracting the customers. He gives a better option, better photographs, or maybe a person can have a mobile phone or a watch and he gives the description and the customers have a look at it and the way it is advertised and he puts a price for it, maybe X plus Y. And once the order is given, this person in drop shopping, he doesn't own the product, he doesn't possess it, he just has an online website or an online app, whatever it is. Once a customer pays money, then he goes to the manufacturer and he buys it maybe at a better rate because he gives a bigger order. So the cost which he gets from the manufacturer may be X, he may put X plus Y on his own website. The why is the extra money is taken and deleting the cost of shipping etc. balances this profit. So once a customer orders it, he goes to the manufacturer, he tells to the manufacturer, this is the address of the customer delivered directly. Now this is the conventional method of drop shipping, of drop shopping, sorry. This is the conventional method of, of uh, drop shipping that they give an order on a website. The person who owns the online website doesn't possess the uh, goods, doesn't own the goods. He gives the manufacturer, tells the manufacturer directly. This conventional method of, of uh, drop shipping, it is haram Islamically, mainly for two reasons. Because of the Hadith of Beloved Prophet, it's there in Sunan Abu Daud, verse number 4, Hadith number 3503, in which Asaba Hakim bin Hazm, may Allah be pleased with him, he comes to the Prophet and says that people want to buy goods which I do not possess. Can I go in the market and buy it and give it to them? So the Prophet said, do not sell things which you do not possess. So based on this saying of the Prophet that do not sell things which you do not possess and these hadith also the intermedi in Ibn Majah. So the Fuqahs have come to a conclusion that a Muslim who does not possess the goods, he cannot sell it. And the Muslim who doesn't own the goods, he cannot sell it. So the two requirements for any Muslim to sell any goods to a customer. Number one, he should own it, and number two, he should have he should have possession of it. Now, in the drop shipping method, which we talked about, conventional method, we are breaking both these rules. The person who's advertising online, he doesn't own the goods. Only after he gets the order does he tell the manufacturer to deliver it. Neither does he possess it. So these two conditions are violated. Therefore, Islamically, the conventional method of drop shipping is haram. But there are Sharia financial consultants who have come with alternatives. How can you make this drop shipping halal if you follow a certain procedure which fulfills the requirement of the Sharia? So what they have come to a conclusion that based on a hadith of the Prophet, which was quoted by the question also, of Sahih Bukhari, boy number 3, hadith number 2240, that Ibn Abbas, he said that when the Prophet went to Medina, 
he came to know that people were buying dates two or three years in advance. They paid for dates which were delivered two or three years in advance. So the prophet said that anyone who pays money in advance, he should see to it that he pays after he knows the exact measure, he knows the exact weight and the exact time of delivery or the exact period of delivery, the time period. So here the prophet put a condition that if someone is paying in advance full money, he can pay under the condition that he knows the measure of that good. He knows the weight of that good, the basic description, etc. and the details. And he knows the date of delivery, the exact time period. So if this is done, it is called a salam in the Islamic terminology. It is salam or it's also called as baya as salam. So this is a salam transaction where if the person who is selling the good, if he doesn't possess the good or he doesn't own the good, as long as he is giving the exact description of the goods, whether in terms of measure, whether in terms of weight, an exact date of delivery, then he can take advance payment from the buyer completely. But here the requirement is that the payment should be in full. It cannot be part. So what the fuqaha say, the people who are Sharia expert in Islamic finance, you cannot give part payment. Part payment, it will be debt and business together. So it will be haram. You cannot have to both merge. The payment should be in full. Criteria number one. Criteria number two is that they say that it should be a salam transaction. So in the salam transaction, the person who owns the online website, he should make it clear, he should give all the details of the product. He should give the photograph of the product and he should give the color of the product, the details, the weight if there, the quantity, the clarity, the expiry, all the details if he gives. And also he gives the exact date of delivery, then it becomes a salam transaction. So this, if he does, it, and some of the focus say that if you mention on your online site that you do not possess these goods, that means you're making it very clear. We don't possess the good, but you give the photograph of the good, and you're giving the details, the color, the details, the weight, the measurement, all details, as many as possible, including the exact date of delivery, then this becomes accepted. But now you are clarifying that you do not own the goods. But yet there is one factor which is missing, is that you don't possess and for you to make the transaction, you should see to it that you, you cannot ask Islamically that once you have mentioned these details and if you deliver, the customer knows very well. And as long as you fulfill all these requirements, it is done. So the fuqah, they say, you can then tell the manufacturer, okay, you ship. It is told to the customer that I don't possess it. And it's a salam. In the salam, it is accepted that you don't own the goods. You don't possess it. But they tell the manufacturer to deliver it. Now some fuqa say this is not permitted. Because the person you are buying from, you have to take possession before delivery. So if he delivers it, it will be breaking the contract. He's a manufacturer. He's a seller. He cannot deliver. You have to take possession before delivering. So you can buy from manufacturer, no problem. But if you ask him to ship directly, then it is breaking the Islamic rule of possessing the article. Now, there is one view of the Maliki school of thought. What they say that this hadith mainly refers to food stuff because people used to pay for the dates two or three years in advance. So the Maliki school of thought says this, this requirement of possessing the goods is only for food stuff not for other material. 
But this is the view of a minority. The remaining three, uh, three schools of thoughts, that is uh, the Hanafis, the Hanafis, the Shafi, and the Hanbalis, they don't agree with this. So this is a minority view. The majority doesn't agree. So according to humbly school of thought, no problem, possession is not a must, it's not a foodstuff. You can ask the manufacturer to deliver directly, it's accepted. But the majority disagree. You cannot, you have to take possession. So what they say, that you can either have another salam with the manufacturer and solve this problem, or what you say, that you ask the courier deliver, the courier company to deliver it. Now when, in a normal circumstances, when a courier company is delivering the goods, they are having a contract with the manufacturer, not, not with the person who owns the online site. So that means you are not taking position. So in this case, what do the Sharia financial consultant say? That you should have a contract with the courier company. And say that now you are our agent. Because today possession is a word which is difficult. Previously, okay, anything possession me physically, you have it with you. Today, you can't have everything physical. Okay, if it's a small good, if it's a mobile, you can have. If it is a watch, you can have. You can't, suppose you buy a house and you buy a house in a different city. Physically, you can't get that to your good out. You cannot. So, physical possession also means that if you have a document which says it is yours, it's accepted. Or if you have the, the keys of the house, that's accepted as physical possession. So, the Terminology of physical position has changed as times have changed. So today the Fukas say that even if you don't have it yourself, you can appoint an agent to do it. But you can't ask the manufacturer to do it because that will break the contract. So that is the reason what the Fukas say that you can have a contract with the courier company and tell the courier company have a contract that you are appointing them to pick up the goods from the manufacturer and delivered to the customer. So as far as drop shipping is concerned, if you fulfill all these few requirements, that is on the website, you mention very clearly that you don't possess these goods. You mention the details of the good, the color, the date of all the details, the weight, the measure, as many details as possible and be very clear and see to it that you fulfill the requirement of date of delivery. And you take the onus if something goes wrong, you are liable for it. So if you cannot deliver on time, it becomes a duty, you deliver something equivalent to them or refund the money, whatever it is, it should be done as per the rules of the Sharia. If this is done and then you have a contract with, with the courier company that they will pick up, they will be your proxy agent and pick up from the manufacturer and deliver it to the customer. If anything happens in between, you are liable, you take the liability. So if all these rules of the Sharia are fulfilled, then drop shipping can become permissible. But the conventional method is wrong. But if you follow all these rules of Sharia, so it doesn't break and it fulfills, it becomes a salam, it is permissible and then your business will be halal. Otherwise, the conventional method of drop shipping is haram. Hope that answers the question.